All right, let's get into it on a Friday. We are ready to roll. Hope you guys had a decent week and we can finish it out for you. Uh, You know, I think the way to start, I thought a lot about how I want to begin today. And I, it's not going to be blowtorch theater. It's I, I don't want to do that. You know, I thought of David a lot last night because David believes in like visions and dreams and, you know, seeing the future, all that religious stuff. And I said, you know, maybe because I'm a heathen, I don't see what Troy Weaver sees. Maybe I don't get the plan. Maybe I'm just a dumbass on the radio and I can't put it all together because I'm just a commoner. Like him drafting Asur Thompson, a player who largely cannot shoot, cannot dribble at five and whose hallmark is tries hard, great defender. Yikes. But maybe I'm just dumb. So I go, okay, fine. They were the worst defensive team in the league. They want to address being a bad defensive team. And they believe Asur Thompson's going to be able to go out and guard three, maybe four positions. All right. Then they move up later in the round. And they get Sasser off my Houston team that Rico hates. And that's the one that kind of really hit me where I go, what are we doing here exactly? Now, look, had the Celtics kept that pick or had the Heat made the pick or had the Nuggets made the pick or had the Suns made the pick, Had Milwaukee made the pick, if you are a a deep playoff team and you want to get this, you know, 24-year-old college player who's a dog, but he's undersized, defense is the calling card, and a lot of the shots that he took and made at Houston he'd never be allowed to take in the pros, I would understand it. I don't get that when you already have a three-guard rotation and now he's number four. Okay, so here's here's where I'm at with this. I think in order to really have the final opinion, I have to see what, if anything, they do in free agency. Because I'm going to be open with you. This isn't talking out of both sides of my mouth, Rico. I'm being serious. While I don't like what they did last night, because I thought it was ridden with narrative and cliche. Truthfully. I mean, if we created a Troy Weaver bingo board and you had words like grit and foxhole and he's a piston and defense and relentless. Oh, blow it out your Blue ass. Blue collar. Yeah, I don't care. The Pistons are drafting on a narrative and a cliche. And it's like, fellas, I, I, no one's interested in anything you're selling. It's not 1989. Nor is it 2003, 2004. The league has changed. Nobody wants all grit, toughness, and foxhole. We want boats and hoes. I mean, let's get a prestige worldwide. Come on. I just, Kenny knows the reference. The point I'm making is, if they go out and sign Cam Johnson, do I feel different? Of course I do. I'd be lying to my audience if I said no. But that's a big if. That's a, That might be a $120 million if. That requires the Nets not to match. Right. As we sit here right now, I need to know if you see the plan. If you understand the plan. Because here's where I'm at. None of the pieces fit together. None of it. No. You don't have shooting, and you drafted a guy who doesn't shoot. Please do not pick up the phone and talk to me about a day he went three for four in one of the three playoff games he played in a 400-seat arena. Just save yourself the time. I'm not interested. He's a 30% shooter from three. Full stop. And he didn't have to do it in harsh environments. And and honestly... You're rounding up. Trying to be 30%. nice. 30%. Trying to be nice. <laughs> to trying to keep it with, fair. Yeah. Trying to be fair. Now, my issue is none of your centers fit. Wiseman can't play with Duran. Duran can't play with Beef Stew. Beef Stew can't play with Wiseman. And nobody wants to play with Marvin Bagley because he sucks. So you got a collection of centers who don't have versatility, don't stretch the floor. No one can shoot it. No one is even an effective post player. All right? We don't have a stretch four. The one wing we have is 34 and on a one-year expiring. Might not even be with the team. And then we get to Cade, who hasn't shown to be a high-level shooter, and Ivy's working on it. Rico, I'd argue with you that if we do what we wanted to do in trading Bogdanovich at this point, we would trade the only 
above average to good shooter this franchise has. So here's what I look at. How do the pieces fit? <laughs> well, if you don't acquire a legitimate stretch four or a dead eye who can moonlight at the four but primary at the three, Rico, I don't know how it works. I've been trying to figure that out myself. I, I took my own advice. I wasn't going to complain till the draft was over because I said maybe – He's gathering up chips, and he's going to put this in a trade, and we'll hear Zion got moved. Something happened. And at the end of the night, the lights went out. The janitor right. starts sweeping up. Right. And I said, wait, it's, so it's done. This is it. This is what we're coming back to Detroit with. There's no middle class. Either you're a guard or you're a big that really can't do much. But there's no forwards on this team. Well, one. So let me ask the people, because look, I, I, it has nothing. It has very little to do with the players they selected. I don't know these guys personally. I don't care to. Asur Thompson is going to have to work his way into becoming a legitimate offensive player. He's just not. His brother, a Amen, is the ball handler and the shooter and the more polished player offensively. Is that fair? Hey, look, man, I'm just trying to I'm trying to make a point. I'm not even sure you got the best twin. So you took this guy and you took him for defense and effort. All right, I can roll with it. Well, who's around him? There's your issue. Then Sasser, I, I just, I'm sorry. Like Sasser's a, luck, a luxury piece. Right, why don't you just pop in the Bad Boys DVD? I mean, honestly, like that's what I'm tired of. Because every 20 years it works, and I guess they figure – it's time for it to work. Right, again. but it's why are we the only franchise who does that? You never hear the Celtics or the Lakers or the Bulls or or the Rock. We're drafting rockets. He's a rocket man. I mean, it, it, what? We're drafting the best players. We're the only team in the league that does this narrative thing. Grit, foxhole, relentless effort, bad boys. I mean, by the way, by the way, can I get a refund? For the 48 seconds I spent reading the column in the free press, a sword Thompson could play for either the bad boys or to go into work Pistons. Refund, please. But, but you have to realize. No, like, it's, realize it's, nothing. It's not just a Piston thing. It's a city thing. And, and you know what? I don't have to accept it. It's a city. I mean, the Lions peddled it, won some games, and everybody's bought into it. Right, Grits. but they don't, they don't do this whole you know, we're building based on our heritage. Oh, and you'd go, well, the Lions don't have any. Well, at least they recognize it because you know what the Pistons don't have? They don't have a lot of heritage. They have two time periods, and they should have won more titles each time. I think we both agree on that. They were Rob. Fa Phantom yeah. Fall on Kareem. Yeah. Uh, also, Big Shot Bob. Right. Reality is the spaces between, they're one of the five worst franchises in the league. Okay? So stop drawing upon those two moments in time it's almost like Troy Weaver was brought in and handed a script. This is what you're going to say. This is what we're doing. And it's like, why? The league has moved on. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to. No, lie to me. <laughs> but lie to me. Troy did a great job. Okay, good. I'm glad we're off to a good start. <laughs> you said lie to me. No, you. I want to hear from the people because, look, I, I'm clearly going to root for both of these guys. And do I like Sasser as a player? Of course I do because I love Houston Hoops. But that's a guy I want on a playoff team when I need 14 minutes a night as a luxury. Right here and right now, he's never playing above your top two guards. And that means what? Killian's done. So you replaced Killian Hayes. That's what you did with that's Big 25. What happened to home runs, brother? What happened? My man. Man, this this what happened to home runs? This was striking out in batting practice. That's how it felt. Um and I told you from the start, people, don't get angry. I didn't want to pick at five. That's not me changing history. I'm not mad that they took Asur Thompson. It's that I don't care that they took Asur Thompson. I didn't do what cookies did. I didn't plant a flag. I told you I'm unemotional about most of these players. But when you draft a guy who simply cannot shoot, and who's not a ball handler, and I go, oh, man, we drafted a defense first player at five? I I, I struggle with that. Yeah, I, I have no idea what's going on with the organization. You you brought in this coach. You, paid, you made him the highest-paid coach. You went into this draft. You said you are going for home runs. You, 
I think it's safe to say as of now, it's not there. This all comes down to what he's going to do in free agency, Mike. And, I, and honestly, I'm going to give you the answer, and I want you to make fun of me. Okay, People, you're not going to like what I say. You have to go out and offer Cam Johnson a contract that is so offensive, <laughs> the Nets won't match it. Cam Johnson is everything a sore Thompson isn't. He's taller. He's a 40% shooter from deep. He's a proven player. He's played in the playoffs. And he's a dude by all accounts. Plus, Monty Williams loves him. The thought process is the Nets are offering four at 84. You're not doing four at 90. You're not doing four at 100. I think you got to go four at 120. You have really got to overpay? It's the Detroit tax. Hey, hey, ready? No, no. Yeah. Breaking news. Do you want to look back at what you just had to pay Monty Williams? You need to make this something the Nets can't match. Push him over the apron. I'm saying if you get Cam Johnson, I can begin to make more sense of this, but that still requires the Nets not matching. Yeah, I'm, I'm still not understanding anything, and it's going to come down to free agency. Now, Troy said he's waiting to see what teams do because of the luxury tax is going to happen. Mike, if he doesn't make some type of a move and this team is back in the lottery again next year, he can't make the picks. There has to be somebody else. There has to be somebody new because now we're going down the Alavila road where – you're going to keep adding players and adding your players. So by the time the new guy gets here, the entire organization is trash and you got to start all over again. Well, that's the other problem I have. And I want to throw the number out 248 539 9797. Guys, it's year four of a rebuild. This isn't year one or year two, it's year four. And now you drafted a guy that means the end of Killian Hayes. Bay already got shipped out for a dead body. And beef stew is a nothing. So your first draft is a nothing. You had the number one pick in year two. Easy pick. It's Cade. You had Ivy fall in your lap. Easy pick. And now we're here. Well, what else has he put around this team? I'm with Rico. And I've said it. This is all about trades and free agency for me this summer. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to use this pick. He's done nothing. Because in the end, if I look at Houston's core versus yours, or I look at the cores of other rebuilding teams, I'm invariably taking those. Now, can you greatly, and in a dynamic way, change what we view about the team with one, two, three moves in an offseason? Absolutely. That's why I'm not yelling and screaming about this today, okay? I'm not. This isn't about, wah, they didn't take player X. I told you I didn't even want to use the pick. But the specific guy you took is right now at this stage of his life a bad offensive player. All right. It's just what it is. Right. You drafted probably the seventh or eighth player in the rotation next year with the fifth pick overall. I'd be thrilled if he was the seventh guy. Thrilled. Because right. raw that, players, it's hard to crack rotations. Right. But the fifth pick, this is somebody who should be in the lineup. Right. Starting lineup. But the way out. If Monica McNutt interviewing every family member of every pick. Hey, you're a millionaire. Is this fun? No, it sucks. Are you happy your son made it to the league? Wow, Actually, pretty cool. Your brother just got drafted. No? <laughs> Go home. Take the night off. <sighs> it's a long way away from AAU basketball, right? I see you're crying. Are you emotional about this moment? It's not funny. It's terrible.